Okay, so at this point, I have configured Android, I've installed Android Studio, I've installed Git, I've configured Android Studio to access my GitHub account. It's essentially all following instructions that we provided for you to get you to this point. I accepted the assignment in the previous video and that led me here. So now what I have is on github.com, a repository that contains the starter code for the CS124 Fall 2022 or Academic Year 2022 machine project. What I need to do in order to work on the project is to get that code into Android Studio. And there are some things that will happen when I go through that process. So I'm just gonna walk you through that. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit about how to identify yourself and a little bit about what to expect from the starter code. All right, so I've got my repository here and I've also opened up Android Studio. Um, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna use this link. So this is HTTPS. Um, there's a couple of different options here. Um, you don't wanna open with GitHub Desktop. You do not wanna download the zip. You wanna copy this URL. This is what is gonna allow Android Studio to access your code. So I'm gonna hit copy here and I'm gonna go back to Android Studio and I'm gonna use this get from VCS option. And I will paste that URL. And what you'll notice is gonna ask me where to put the code. There's a directory on my computer that's gonna be created to store the code that I'm retrieving from github.com. This is fine. You may choose to put this somewhere else. This is okay. Uh, and now I'm gonna hit clone. Um, so assuming I've done everything correctly, I will get to this screen. Now you want, uh, why is this here? Well, you know, there's code that's gonna run as part of building the project and grading it and things like that. So you essentially have to indicate that you trust the code that's coming along with this repository. And I hope you do. Um, and so I'm gonna, you can decide to trust all the projects in that directory. I'm just gonna hit trust project. Um, okay. So now Android Studio is opening up the project. Now, down here, if you see kind of down here in the right corner, there's some things that are happening. Um, and you know, one of the things that can be a little bit confusing about Android Studio is that frequently like it's doing stuff, but it's not clear that it's doing stuff. And so it may not be ready for you to use, but that area down there, if things are happening there, if you can see it sort of going through the process. Now I've been working on the project. So I have a lot of the required libraries and other pieces of source code already installed on my machine. So that was pretty fast. If you don't, which is likely, that process of importing the MP may take a few minutes. If you're on a slow internet connection, the process of importing the MP may take a while. So you really just wanna be patient with Android Studio. If you close it or whatever, or, or in, in, and do some other things, it's possible that you're gonna mess something up and then you'll have to restart it anyway. So really just, you know, be patient with Android Studio, particularly when you're getting started. The first processes of sort of getting things imported, getting the project configured can be slow, particularly if you have a slow machine or if you have a slow internet connection. And the only thing you can do is really wait. Okay, mine is done, which is good because I don't want to have to vamp here for too long. Um, one of the things that I'm going to do all the time in all of my walkthroughs and all of my videos is that I use what's called the project mode. So up here in the top left, you'll see there's some different choices about sort of like this configures how this left uh, part of um, the, uh, the tool works. And so I like project mode. That's just what I tend to use. When you open up a project by default, it opens up this readme. It's not super uh, useful, so let's close it. And now here we are. So if you haven't used an integrated development environment or IDE before, you are probably a little freaked out because there's a lot going on here. And all I can say is just be calm. We'll walk you through what you need to know. But this is a very sort of information dense display um, uh, of, of, of what we're working on. So over here, and we're gonna go through pieces of the code step by step. We've added a lot of comments and information to the code that we've given you. So the code we've given you is over here. So if you open up, app source main java there are several different uh, directories in here that have code that is used to power the starter code for your application and i've tried to put in lots and lots and lots of commentary throughout the code to give you some sense of what's going on 
What is in here is all using Java ideas that you should be familiar with by this point. Uh, there's maybe a few new things here and there, um, but in general, this is something that, you know, this, this code is code that you should feel uh, like you can piece together and, and puzzle through. Is it all gonna seem super um, nice and familiar? No, this is new. Many of you have never done any Android programming before, so it's fine to be a little bit confused or a little bit perplexed. That's normal. And in fact, that's kind of part of the experience that we want you to have. You know, solving these small little homework problems is a great way to build up sort of basic skills. But at some point, when you start to create software, you're gonna be working in more of this type of environment, which involves a lot of uncertainty, a lot of potential confusion, a lot of code that you didn't write, some things that may not make perfect sense if you're not thinking about them hard. That's just kind of how we build software in the modern world. All right, let's get started by just doing a couple of things here, uh, showing you some of the basics of Android Studio. So up here, um, these are what are called run configurations. These are um, these allow you to do certain things with your application, like run it in the emulator, for example. So I have this already set up. If I hit run app, let's see what the app does out of the box, because the starter code that we gave you actually works. It does a few things. It doesn't do everything that we're going to do, that the app is going to do by the time we're done, but it does do a few things. Now, if you're running this for the first time in Android Studio, you prob this button probably won't work quite the same way. You need to create an emulator first, and there's a dialogue for doing that. We can also, uh, there's also some steps in the tutorials that we provided, or you can ask on the forum. We can help with that process. I've already created an emulator, so mine is running. Now, when I start up the app, you'll see uh, that it's kind of showing me something weird, but if I zoom out a little bit, I should be able to recognize that this is Champaign-Urbana. This is our local environment. Um, and these are, uh, what you'll see on the map, are markers created at favorite places that were submitted by a bunch of course staff, faculty in the department, and other people. Um, now, I can pan the map around. I can zoom in and out using these buttons. There's a few problems. So for example, if I click on one of these, I get this empty bubble. So that's weird. That, that, that seems like something I might want to fix. Something else that I'll show you is that the search bar does nothing. Um, and these are bugs and issues that we're going to work together to fix over the beginning part of the project. So, okay, and, and this is something that we expect you to do as you continue on is to run the app in the emulator and interact with it. If you have an Android device, you can also run this app on your phone potentially, which can be potentially a lot faster. The emulator can be slow on a lot of devices, particularly on hardware that might be a little bit slower itself. Um, so anyways, this is one of the things that you can do with the MP. Other things that you can do, so I'm gonna close my emulator here. Um, I've uh, given you a lint task. So the lint task will run auto formatters on your code and then it also runs a couple of, uh, it runs check style, of course, right? You didn't think you were going to wait, uh, going to get away from check style on the MP, did you? Um, now the code that we give you in the starter code is already formatted properly. So this will just do nothing. But if you, if, if, this is something that you want to run as part of your workflow to tidy up code that you've written or to run check style to make sure that you haven't introduced any check style errors that you might lose credit for when you submit your code, which we'll talk about how to do in a bit. There's also a set of tests that we've provided for MP0. Now, I'm gonna run these tests, and what you're gonna see is that some of them are passing, and there's two of them that are failing. Your job for MP0, talk more about how to do this in the next lesson, is to fix these failing tests. These are not hard to fix, there's like, three lines of code that you need to either modify or change in order to get these test cases to pass, at which point you will earn full credit for MP0. And we'll talk more about this next time. Now, one big word of warning here, when you run test MP0, and I would encourage you to run this along with me kind of at this point when you're getting started with the MP. Here's the problem. The first time you run this, there's this big download that Android Studio has to do. So you may run it and it may sit there and spin and spin and spin and you may be wondering what is happening. There's no progress bar um, and it may just be, it may seem hung. If you're on a slow internet connection, the only thing you can do is wait. So you may want to run this and then 
let it run overnight, make sure it's plugged in, uh, go out with a friend, do something fun, come back a few hours later and you'll see it'll finally complete. It only has to do that download once. So the next time you run test suites for MP0 or for the later checkpoints, you'll be fine. But the first time it can be slow. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. Okay, let's uh, explore another one of these run configurations, which is the grade configuration. Now this may be something that interests you, um, is to figure out how many points am I currently earning on the MP. Okay, so, uh, when I run this, it's going to run the tests, but this time it's actually giving me this uh, error message. Now, go, puzzling through the errors that are produced when you try to do various things on Android Studio is one of the fun parts of the project. And also one of the learning objectives is to get you more comfortable with this type of environment. So when something goes wrong, I have a couple of things that I can do. I can click on different things over here. Sometimes the error output is different. So for an, if I click on app prepare for grading, this isn't very helpful. There's not a lot of useful output here. If I click on this, it shows me that two tests failed, which I expect because those are the tests that aren't working yet that I need to fix in order to complete this checkpoint. Um, and if I click on this up here, I see all the output. It shows me every step that was taken during the process of building and testing the app. Um, but in this case, I have a problem. It says invalid number of contributors in identification file. And the reason for this is one of the first things you should do when you get started with the project is you need to identify yourself to us. So you need to put something in your repository that allows us to figure out who you are when you submit your code. The way you do this is you go to the website, uh, you go to the first MP lesson, and you look for this notification. Now this is gonna be different for you, and this is not my actual ID, thank you very much. Um, so I'm gonna take this ID, and then I'm going to go to id.txt and I'm going to paste it. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't want any new lines or any other information here, but make sure that you paste that entire ID. If you don't get this right, you're going to be confused later. You know, you'll try to submit and nothing will happen and things like that. Just make sure that you get this right, okay? So I've stuck this in id.txt. Now, when I run the grade, when, when I run the grade task, Let's see what happens. So now uh, what's going to happen is a little bit more exciting um, in the sense that I've identified myself. Um, and what y'all notice is that I've earned 10 points on the project because there are no check style errors in the code that we provided. So congratulations, you earned 10 points. Now, note here that we expect you to commit your work. So as soon as you earn points on the MP, you should make a commit and push that commit to GitHub so that you earn official points. The score that is shown here when you run the grade task is not an official score. It does not count for anything. We will talk about the process of actually submitting your work on the next part of, uh, on the next lesson on the MP. We'll talk about how to do that to make sure that you get an official grade for the MP um, and not just this local grade. So when you run the grader, this is not official. Running this does not earn you any actual points. If you go over to the grading page, you won't see anything there. You'll still see a zero, but this is a way for you to estimate the grade that you will receive when you submit for official credit, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so at this point, I'm starting to explore the code that I've been provided a little bit. We'll do that more together on the next lesson. I've inserted my ID into id.txt, which is super important, and I've got a working copy of my uh, starter code, the starter code for the Java uh, MP installed in Android Studio. So I'm good to go, and now I'm at the point where I can start exploring the code and making progress on what I need to do for MP0.